One of the most famous and first few official sightings of the Mothman is said to have happened in Point Pleasant, West Virginia on November 15, 1966 at 11 p.m. It was this sighting that got writer of the Mothman prophecies John Keel interested in the creature and began the entire legend. The sighting was detailed in the newspapers at the time, and then in John Keel's 1975 book on the subject. It's been featured in several documentaries, such as the 2002 Search for the Mothman documentary, the 2011 Eyes of the Mothman documentary, and 2017's The Mothman of Point Pleasant documentary. A retelling of this story was even immortalized on Bob Roach's Mothman statue in Point Pleasant. On November 15, 1966, two young couples were joyriding around in a black 1957 Chevy to a remote hangout spot north of Point Pleasant known as the TNT area. The TNT area was an old World War II munitions plant. When they got there, they suddenly saw two giant red eyes next to the old abandoned North Power Plant. One of the couples was Steve Mallet and Mary Mallet. The other was Linda Scarberry and Roger Scarberry. They claimed to have seen a man-like figure with wings go around the corner at the old powerhouse. It appeared to have its wing caught in a guide wire near the road. The creature then managed to free its wing. It didn't run, but wobbled like it couldn't keep its balance. Linda described the creature as having circular fiery red eyes and a body just like a man, but with wings. They said the creature is about six or seven feet tall, with wings folded against its back, half man, half monster. She said, you could see muscles in its legs. The couples couldn't believe what they had seen. They quickly drove off to the main highway on Route 62. Linda yelled for Roger to hurry. The couple saw the creature sitting on a hill by a large billboard as they went around a curve. It spread its wings and went up into the air. They were all terrified and kept yelling for the driver to go faster. The Mothman began gliding back and forth over their car. We didn't know what it was. I don't think we've ever been so scared, said Linda. As they went along a straight stretch of road, they were going anywhere from 100 to 120 miles an hour, but the creature was still able to follow them. They saw it in the back window and saw the shadow go across the car as it flew. They couldn't get away from it. They could also hear the wings hitting the top of the car as they drove. It's even said to have left scratch marks on Roger's 57 Chevy. It squeaked like a big mouse, said Mary Mallet. They were only able to get away from the Mothman when they reached the edge of Point Pleasant. The creature disappeared, veering off into a field as they went into town. The couples continued going downtown and stopped at Tiny's Diner to figure out what to do next. Linda suggested to go to the police, but the Mallets thought they'd just laugh at them. They eventually decided to drive to the Mason County Courthouse. As they were driving, they saw a large dead dog laying along the road. The dog was gone when they drove by again later. They went to the sheriff's office and told Sheriff George Johnson and Deputy Miller Halstead what they saw. The Scarberry and Mallet couples were split up into separate rooms to give individual police reports. Each witness described similar things. They told police they saw a large winged creature whose eyes glowed red when the car headlights picked it up. They described it as a flying man with 10-foot wings following their car. The police didn't believe them at first, but knew they weren't troublemakers and saw they were genuinely terrified. So the sheriff actually went out to investigate their story. The couples drove back out to the TNT area with the deputies. According to one of the witnesses, the winged creature jumped out as they passed where the dead dog was, went over top the car, and went through the field on the other side. The police found no sign of the creature. However, the deputy is said to have seen shadows circling the old power plant, and also heard strange static disturbance coming from his radio that he couldn't explain. Halstead admitted he saw a cloud of dust kicked up by an adjacent coal yard that may have been the creature's doing. The teens were too afraid to go back to their homes. They stayed at the Scarberry's trailer, turned all the lights on, and stayed awake all night from fear. The following day, the sheriff held a press conference to discuss the sightings. The local press began printing the story and named the creature Mothman based on the comic book character Batman, who had just gotten a television series at the time. Steve Mallet told the local newspaper, We understand people are laughing at us, but we wouldn't make up all this to make us look like fools. That same day, the couples went back to the TNT area during daylight. They saw something fly up inside a boiler when a door was kicked open. No one stayed around long enough to see what it was. More and more people began reporting similar things, such as Marcella Bennett's sighting, which happened a day later. Within two days, hundreds of cars full of eager people swarmed out to the TNT area at night in hopes of seeing the Mothman. A shadow was cast over the Valley of Point Pleasant, and thus began the legacy of West Virginia's Mothman. During the production of the Search for the Mothman documentary, the crew interviewed Linda Scarberry on location at the TNT area for 10 minutes, but then had to stop as Linda became too overwhelmed by fear to go in any further. Her now ex-husband, Roger Scarberry, refused to be interviewed, as did the Mallets. 
Linda Scarberry was born June 10, 1947, and died on March 6, 2011. She claimed that she and her husband had seen Mothman many times, sometimes at close range. She said, It seems like it doesn't want to hurt you. It just wants to communicate with you.